All right, let's get at it, starting with the Lakers and the Suns. Now, hard as it is to believe, last night at Staples, the Lakers were hosting their first playoff game since 2013, looking for their first home playoff win since 2012. So, that being said, you know they were looking to put on a show, and they did just that, especially in the second half. And this series, the one that everybody was looking forward to, became spicy as hell. I love it. I mean, it always is, right? When Chris Paul shows up and starts blasting people on the package or undercutting them on rebounds. And so as not to disappoint, the point God got it going early on in game one with that incident involving he and LeBron. Remember when LeBron hit the floor, hit the deck? Lakers were pissed. You knew right then that Chris Paul would be a major storyline just like he always is this time of year. This time of year, that dude generally is dragging his team, whichever team it is, into the postseason with a shot at a deep run only to inevitably get hurt and kill any chance they have at a title. How many times have we seen that from Chris Paul? We saw it in Houston. We saw it with the Clippers. And now we're seeing it with the Suns. Just as we're seeing the same guy agitate, cheap shot, allegedly, other dudes. So again, that was game one. Spicy as hell. Then you get to game two. Game two of the cage match. And AD ripping a page from Paul's playbook and blasting Jay Crowder in the package. You know what I'm getting at is they don't like each other. Which means I love the whole thing. And then that brings us to last night's game. Game three. Before I get to how badly that game ended for the Suns, let's go to the third quarter first because that's where it all turned. That's where the Suns started to lose their poise and their composure and it all started to unravel. It was a third quarter. That's when L.A. was up by three but then ended up by 13. Like, LeBron did not really look himself in the first half, but clearly... He went into the locker room. He made some adjustments. He came out of the locker room a much different dude. And by much different, I mean much more aggressive. So did his teammates, who were feeding off that newfound aggression. Suddenly, instead of settling for shots on the perimeter, big dude finally started to get it going downhill. Finally started to attack the rack. And his teammates fed off of him flipping the switch. In other words, Operation Bully Ball was in full effect in the third quarter, and the Lakers looked like the defending champs for the first time in a long time. They were aggressive, they were physical, they were getting into the paint, and they were getting into the Suns' domes, and the wreckage was easy to see. You see, Suns fan, that's the part that's got to concern you the most. Not just that your team lost, but how they lost. The fact that they lost their composure and their poise. You know, and by the way, was that not the question coming in? Isn't that what everybody wanted to know coming in? Whether or not a young team like this could handle the big stage and the bright lights. And last night, they didn't. You know, maybe, maybe they can with a healthy Chris Paul leading them, but he's not healthy. And they're not the same team without him at or near his best. And the next thing you know, the Suns are allowing themselves to get hooked. Like in the fourth quarter, when LeBron got Jay Crowder on him in isolation. At that point, they've got a 19-point lead. And LeBron made dude look bad. Made him look really, really bad. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure who enjoyed that more. LeBron or the Lakers bench. I think I'll give that to the bench. Because that crew was on its feet, talking and chirping the moment LeBron got that ball in his hands. They knew. The bench knew what was coming. They knew it so well. Bench the salt. They knew it so well that Andre Drummond was acting it out before it even happened, holding on to an invisible ball and getting an invisible defender on his back before shaking him off and benching the salt. And then when LeBron finished that off, the bench was celebrating that punk job like they had just won the lottery or another championship or both. But it wasn't just LeBron going at Crowder. Dennis Schroeder. And, and Devin Booker had been talking the entire game as well. 
And when Schroeder drove the lane with 35 seconds left, it all came to a head. Like I said, lost their heads, lost their poise, lost their composure, lost the game, may have lost the series. I guess you could say push came to shove. Hey, Hey, listen, no. Also, you know what I don't need? What I really don't need right now is for some old schoolers to come in here and talk about how soft the NBA is. Yes, I understand that was not exactly Kevin McHale, clothes lining, Kurt Rambis back in the day. I also understand that Schroeder sold it with an extra roll or five. But the fact is, it's not a basketball play. And it's not a soft take either. This should not be a discussion about the bad boy Pistons and whether or not they could play in the league today. This is not what that's about. This is about the Suns melting down and losing their cool. Booker's shove was ruled a flagrant two. He got run. Crowder, who was not called for anything on that play, was teed up, and he got run. And they couldn't have been happy that the guy who they just fouled popped right up on his knucks and busted out a few push-ups and then knocked in his free throws to ice it and stave off any possibility for some ugly ass backdoor cover by the Suns. Like, no, the Suns were not going to come back from a 21-point deficit to win that game, but they were doing enough late to scare any betters who hit the Lakers minus six and a half or the Lakers minus seven. No names mentioned. This guy, me. That said, an ugly end for the Suns. And even though they won, the Lakers were still pissed after it was over. Check out A.D., Check out A.D. and what he had to say and the way he went in on Booker. Like I said, we're not talking about old school enforcers here. We're not talking about Maurice Lucas, Rick Mahorn, Kevin McHale, but it doesn't matter. It's neither here nor there. AD is actually right. You can't push a guy when he's in air. And that's what happened. Schroeder himself also weighed in. All right, so the end of that, to me, is key. It's no accident that he threw in that, took it too sensitive. Like, he wants everybody to know where the Suns are right now mentally, how mentally fragile they are right now. The fact that two guys got ejected, that they got run at the end of the game. See, that's the thing. It's not just that they're down two games to one. Like, that's not insurmountable. Even against the defending champs, win the next game, and you rip the home court right back. But nothing about the Suns and the way that game ended made it sound like that's going to happen, especially Paul being busted up. If he's not right or near right, this series is going to be over before you know it, if it's not already over. And how ironic. (laughs) I mean, how rich and ironic. How ironic that as great as Chris Paul is. He was the guy complaining about getting need in the nuts during the postgame presser. Ask anybody who has been on the receiving end of a Chris Paul package blast. Arr! The Hall of Famer competing and trying to help his team win. That's rich. So his shoulder and nads were not his only issues either. He was also salty about the officiating, in particular, one official, Scott Foster. It's like he wanted to make damn sure everybody knew that's 11 playoff games in a row that Chris Paul has been kneed in the nuts by Scott Foster. 11 games in a row. He's lost 11 games in a row refed by Scott Foster. I mean, that's pretty interesting. I'm guessing if you ask Chris Paul, he would tell you that's 11 games in a row that he's lost to Scott Foster. Except, I'm here to tell you, that was not about Foster. 
That game was not close enough for it to be about Scott Foster. That was more about the fact that Chris Paul is dealing with a shoulder injury, got kneed in the nuts, and the Lakers bullied them, especially on the inside. And then finally, it got even worse after the game with a series of tweets which popped up from Chris Paul's account, including, quote, I own a Disney and a Mickey and bleep the Lakers. They bleeping suck, end quote. So, yes, to add insult to injury, Chris Paul reportedly got hacked. Hacked also. A shot to the junk. He lost the game. He complained about the refs. And he got hacked. The grand slam of terrible nights. And now the Suns have to shake all that off before Sunday. Good luck with that. 